Electrophoresis is a laboratory technique used to categorize particles based on their charge or size. In two sides, positively charged anode and negatively charged cathode are separated by gel, which has the protein to be examined. Proteins move based on their charges. Positively protein will end close to the negative, and negative protein ends closer to the positive. Electrophoresis is used in hematology as well as in genetic testing. In hematology, it is used to differentiate the type of hemoglobin and also in multiple myeloma. The globin chain constituting the hemoglobin could be alpha, beta, gamma, or delta. Normal adult hemoglobin is hemoglobin A1 and composed of two alpha and two beta chains. On hemoglobin electrophoresis, this type of hemoglobin is most close to the anode, the positive plate. Fetal hemoglobin is composed of two alpha and two gamma chains because gamma chain is less negative than the beta chain, fetal hemoglobin is represented less close than hemoglobin A1. Going to this order, we have sickle cell triad and sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease results from Messens mutation in which one amino acid is replaced by another. This mutation that happens in chromosome 11 results in glutamic acid being replaced with valine in the beta chain. Glutamic acid is negative amino acid, while valine is neutral. Thus, hemoglobin S reaches further side away from the anode than normal adult hemoglobin. It is even more positive than fetal hemoglobin. Recall again that sickle cell disease is characterized by hemoglobin S which results from point mutation that causes single amino acid glutamic acid to go and replaced with valine. The end result is extravascular and intravascular hemolysis. Hemoglobin C is even more positive because it is characterized by replacement of glutamic acid negative with lysine amino acid, which is positive. Hemoglobin C disease causes extravascular hemolysis. Patients with hemoglobin SC in which there is different mutations in the two beta globin gene, one coding for valin instead of glutamic acid, and one coding for lysine instead of glutamic acid, is milder than hemoglobin SS disease. Electrophoresis is also useful in investigation of multiple myeloma. This hematopoietic tumor affects plasma cells. Normally, these cells produce large amount of antibodies specific to particular antigen. Plasma cells have a centric nucleus, abundant trough in the plasma reticulum, and well-developed Golgi apparatus. Normally, they are found in bone marrow and not circulating. Serum electrophoresis normally shows one spike of protein, which is albumin. Having another spike resulting in M shape indicates high gamma globin from overproducing new plasmic cells, which are plasma cells in multiple myeloma. In genetic testing, electrophoresis is used for plotting procedures. We have southern blot, northern blot, and western blot. Electrophoresis here is used to separate DNA, RNA, and protein particles. In southern blotting, DNA sample is cleaved by enzymes. Then pieces are separated by gel electrophoresis. Then the sample is transferred to a filter exposed to radio-labeled DNA. The labels would recognize their complementary strands if present in the gel electrophoresis. Thus, labeled pieces of DNA is visualized when exposed to film. Southern blotting can identify the presence or absence of certain genes and if they grossly have normal or abnormal structure. It cannot detect, however, single nucleotide mutation or very small deletions. 
Northern blot is similar to southern blot, except that RNA is electrophoresed instead of DNA. It is used to examine mRNA levels, which reflect gene expression. Also, it is used to detect product of mutated gene. If mutated gene is present, it would undergo transcription and produce mRNA. This is achieved by northern blotting. In Western blood, sample protein is separated by gel electrophoresis and transferred to membrane. Labeled antibodies is used to bind relevant protein, so here we are testing the final product of a gene.